Good morning everybody and today I wanted to share with you guys how I'm going to do Jack's outfit. So for those of you who do not know we have, I guess he's like a nine foot tall Jack Skellington and his outfit is in need of some major repair. I have to make him a new outfit. Scott's going to rebolt some of his screws that are loose over the years because once his clothes is on you can't get and access any of the screws so hopefully you guys will enjoy this it will be quite a long video I think I'm gonna try to fast forward a lot of it because I have to actually draw the pinstripes on the fabric but hopefully you guys enjoy this so let's get started shall we all right so this is our jack in his current state pretty faded this is let me show you what the fabric did look like that's how dark it was as you can see how faded it has become right here so the first thing I'm gonna do is take off his sleeves now I did not sew any of his clothes I hot glued all of it so I am going to cut it off so I can have a template or a pattern for the one I'm the new outfit I'm going to make him. All right, so here is our Jack, just in his PVC state. All right, so I have gone through and measured the parts for you guys. It's not gonna be an exact measurement because of course it goes into the elbow a little bit and I did take into account, I added about half an inch to an inch for that. Okay, so from the knees to the floor, they are 32 inches long. Then we have two 45 degree elbows for the knees. From the knees to his hips are two feet. So hopefully you guys can write this stuff down and go back over it. Okay, so right here, his hips. His hips, we have a T, I don't, a T elbow, I guess that's called. I don't know what that is, a T connector. On For his hips, we have a 90 degree, two 90 degree elbows. And inside of this, there's also a piece of PVC. So what Scott did was get the smaller PVC. I'm sorry, I don't know what size that is on the inside slid it all the way through here and that's about nine and a half inches so the one that goes inside of this that connects the two legs is about nine and a half inches then you go from here all the way up this is his torso that's about two feet long then we have a four-way connector here for his shoulders and of course his torso and his head so we have his head this pipe is nine inches and then his shoulders from here right about here to the elbow they are about eight and a half inches long and then for this elbow or for this shoulder, 
I put a 90 degree, but for this elbow, we use the 45. So this arm is pretty much hanging down by his body where this one you could move around and it's a little bit wider like he's reaching for something if you would. So hopefully this all is making sense to you guys and I'm explaining it kind of good. So just like we did a 90 degree on that elbow, for this elbow we put a 45 degree on this one as well. So the same arm that has the 45 degree at the shoulder has a 45 degree at the elbow as well. Now, the hands are a little tricky because I honestly can't remember what's under all of this white duct tape. I know we got the little cap, that's like you cap off pipes, I think it is and Scott drilled holes in it. Then we fed this wire, which is now very rusty. We fed the wire through the hole and then we fed these little teeny pieces of PVC through it. Let me see what size they are. So for the thumb, this piece right here is a little piece of two piece two inch PVC. This one's an inch and a half and that's an inch and a half. And then I just went to the craft store and got some beads and painted them black. Now for his pointer finger, I'll measure that real quick. All right, so for his pointer finger, this is an inch and a half. The center section of his pointer finger is two inches and then an inch and a half again. This one, which is his fourth of the third finger, inch and a half, two inches, inch and a half. And his last finger, inch and a half, two inches, inch and a half. And of course, put those wooden um, beads in between each joint so they look like knuckles and of course I painted them black then we just simply folded it over so that the beads wouldn't fall off and then you can position them this part right here we just duct taped I can't even see inside of there anymore but I'm sure you guys can get creative and figure out a way to attach it. Like I said, it's a cap from what I remember. And then Scott drilled four holes through it. I fed the metal through the thing before, of course, putting it on the PVC and then bent it on the inside of that cap so it wouldn't fall out. I'm sure some of you noticed, but I did forget to mention that we did screw in the joints. So from the elbows to the, pardon my fingers, I have been doing some crafting and painting, but from the elbows to the actual other parts of the PVC, we did put some screws in there. I believe Scott pre-drilled it and then stuck these screws in for more stability. Here he did it down there to do the PVC that's coming across through the inside and then he put a screw from here into that. Now what we did not do, which we will do now with this, since his, uh, since we have to fix him up, this time we're gonna also put a screw from here to here because the issue that we ran into was he was twisting and his clothes was on. Once it's glued on there, you can't have access to this in here. So now that the clothes is off of him, we're gonna go ahead and put some screws in here and more than likely up here too. So the top shoulders will not twist either in the wind and everything. So let's go on and make his outfit.
All right, guys, so I am obviously not a seamstress. I wasn't too sure how much fabric to get, so I went ahead and got four yards. It's probably way more than I need, but that's what I ended up getting. I don't know the difference between fabric, so I just picked a black fabric. I don't know what kind of fabric this is. It's just black. And then I got four bottles, four bottles of this puffy paint so I can draw the lines on his fabric after I've cut out all the pieces. Okay, so when I, so when I measured his pant leg from the hip to the bottom of the foot, it was five feet, exactly five feet. So I'm gonna add three inches to the length and the width I'm going to add and I'm going to add about three inches to the width as well so it'll be one foot across and I'm going to go ahead and make the length 64 inches I can always cut some off but once you cut it that's a lot of fabric to waste, so I don't want to waste any, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now I just measured the arms and they measure 51 inches, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut the arms at 58 inches to give myself plenty of room since these are the arms if I need to adjust the shoulders. Of course you have the elbows that you might have to give a little bit of give as well. So I'm just gonna make it 58 inches and I'm gonna just measure this piece of fabric that I have left here because I've already cut the top off. I'm gonna fold it in half and just cut directly in half. I think that should be more than enough extra space for me having to glue it, but I'm gonna fold it and find out right now. All right, so that worked out perfectly. They're gonna be about a foot wide, just like the legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out and we'll keep on going. I am not a seamstress by any way, shape, or form. And if I can remember correctly, I made just a vest part because I'm looking at my glue lines here. So what I think I'm gonna do is cut just the vest and then down to the tails. Then I will be making two smaller pieces for the front of the vest. You see my glue line here, probably on the inside better. You can see my, kind of see my seam right there where I glued it. So what I need to do is cut the vest part out first and the tails. So the long part, including the back. So this is pretty much gonna be the back of the vest. Then I'm gonna make two separate matching front parts that will be cut like this at a peak and then up in a V shape. So I'll make one and then I'll double it for this side. Then I also had to make the lapel. 
So this will be, I'll cut this out. I'll just have to eyeball that and I'll make it from, from the top of the neck and then just kind of swoop it and make two of those. So for right now, I'm going to do the back of the coat with no sleeves. So it's not going to have any sleeves on it. So I've decided to make from the shoulders all the way down to the end of the tail 66 inches. Right now it's about 64 inches. I'm going to add 2 inches because I actually hemmed it with the glue. And that'll take a little bit length of that will take a little bit of length off of it. As you can see, I tried to hem it. I have decided to go ahead and cut that vest, the front of it off, so it's easier for me to make a pattern of it. And I'm obviously not gonna need this outfit anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and make two of those front halves. I'm gonna go ahead and make that 26 inches. Right now it's 25. The widest part is nine inches, so I'm gonna go ahead and make that nine and a half inches. Okay, so now I've done the two pieces for the vest and I'm gonna do the lapel right now. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off of the existing one that I have. When I w did this initially, I made a template out of paper. I took it out to Jack, I measured it and all that, but since I have it, that's why I'm showing you guys just how I'm doing it. But when you go to make one, when you dis if you decide to make one, just go ahead and make one out of paper. Just hold it up to Jack and measure it. See the length that you would like it to be. So the next part I'm going to cut out and the last part is going to be what I call Jack's diaper. This right here extends up through his chest and this wraps around his, this part right here ends up on the back covering his bottom and these two are leg holes. So it'll all make sense once it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and unglue, pull it apart here, so it's one big piece. So it's 27 inches in length, and at the widest part, it's about 18 and a half inches. So once again, I'm going to add a couple of inches all the way around, so maybe half an inch on all the sides.
So that is all that I have left out of four yards of fabric that I started out with. I'm going to go ahead and start doing the puffy paint and drawing the lines on the fabric because I really couldn't find the pinstripe fabric and don't worry the lines don't have to be perfect as you could tell in my other one just do as best as you can in drawing the lines so let's get started on that So like I said guys, it does not have to be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the stripes on everything else because it is 1.30 and we are leaving for the fort tomorrow. So hopefully I can get done because I need to give this paint about three hours to dry, which means I'll be out hot gluing Jack, hopefully around six o'clock this evening and hopefully I'll get it done for you guys. All right, I'm gonna continue and then I'll show you all the pieces with the stripes on them. So I've gone through about two and a half of these Tulip Puffy Paint Slick four ounce to make the stripes and I finally finished so these are the pieces of fabric for the legs so those are the coattails right there that is the diaper part that I call these are the lapel parts for the vest there's the rest of the coattail here is the vest and over here are the pieces of fabric for the arms. So as you could tell on this one, I started running out of my tube of puffy paint. So that's why I started a new tube and my hand was getting very tired. I was actually using both hands to squeeze the puffy paint so you could see where it kind of bunched up right there the paint but that's okay because like I said once it's on I'm sure nobody will be able to tell what the heck is perfect and what is not perfect all right so let's go outside and get Jack ready for his next step while this stuff dries for a few hours okay so this is Jack as he stands Scott has reinforced and added more screws like I told you. I think he told me if he, if we were to make another one, he just um, put PVC glue on it. So it'd be a nice and tight fit and it would never move. But for now we have these. And like I said, we are heading to the fort tomorrow. So I am trying to accomplish making him a new outfit and gluing it on him, which is very time consuming in one day. So everything you see in this video, I have done in one day. So Scott stood him up for me while we're waiting for the paint to dry. I'm going to go ahead and do another part. So what you're going to need for this next part is a white t-shirt. So it doesn't have to be new tape of some sort so you could use duct tape painters tape uh, frog tape whatever tape it's just a you'll see in a second and something to have stuffing with so you're gonna stuff the shirt to give Jack a little bit of body so I'm gonna use Walmart bags 
We're also gonna make his hips a little bit um, padded with this and with the tape also. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the shirt. As you will see, I'm going to tape it on to Jack and then I'm gonna stuff the shirt for a little bit of body in his chest. All right, so I am going to start with a piece that I like to call the diaper. I honestly can't remember how I did this the first time, so I'm just gonna wing it. All right guys, so this is pretty much what it looks like so far in the back. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm try to show it on camera, but I know it's gonna be hard. All right, I'm not too sure how well you guys can see this because it's all black, but I'm going to turn this in and then I'm gonna turn it in here and then I'm going to glue the seams together so I'm going to try to clean it up by folding it in folding it in and then gluing these two together if that makes any sense so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the entire leg all right so I don't think that looks too shabby let's do the other leg now I will show you guys this since I am really hot and I'm actually quite tired in my rush to trim his pants I gave him high waters that really doesn't bother me too much because he'll be in the ground that little two inches of PVC really won't be seen because I'm gonna put pumpkins around his feet but just be very careful because you can have too much, but you can't add any back on. I suppose I could hot glue a little piece there if I feel ambitious enough at the end. But I think he's looking pretty good with his new snazzy outfit. Okay, so I'm going to do the arms the same way I did the legs. Starting at the shoulder with that blue tape on the right of jack when i'm looking at him actually it's his left side but i'm going to start with that side and we're going to do the same to both arms gluing them on and then we will be almost complete
Okay, so there you have it. Jack has one sleeve, his what I call diaper, and both of his pant legs. Next time I'll see you guys, I'm gonna be putting on his tails and his vest. All right, so I wanna thank you guys for sticking with me so far today. You have joined me for an entire Sunday, and I appreciate that. Okay, so this is one part of the vest. This is the other side of his vest. That's why you needed the white t-shirt underneath. Now this, these are the lapel pieces. So as you can tell, the lapel pieces are the only pieces that I did horizontally. The other, all the other stripes are vertical because that would have kind of blended in if I would have done it vertic uh, vertical. So if I would have done it vertical as well, it would have kind of blended in. So I did those horizontally, as you can see. So I'm going to glue the little lapel pieces onto the front of the each of the vest, and then I'm gonna put them on Jack. I do wanna point out that the first well, time I did this we did it in a weekend so there was no rush as you can see right here when I was moving it before it dried it smeared a little bit like I said this is a prop so no big worries here and the first time I did it when I took my time I actually went ahead and hemmed all of these edges with glue so I actually went around all of the edges I hemmed them and then I put it on the vest. But this is a rush job. So this is what it's gonna look like this time. So let's get it on Jack. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is, as you can see the vest is hanging here like a billboard over the shoulder just a little it's right on the top and I'm going to go ahead and glue this to the shirt so that's my next step and then my final step will be putting the back of the tails on So finally, I wanted to give you a shot of his back so I could show you how I put on his tails. And real quick, before I do that, I wanna show you the head I made. So this is just your average uh, pumpkin head you can buy at any craft store. Michael's usually has like a 40% coupon. I'm sure Joanne's has them too. But Scott drilled. A little hole here the size of the PVC for his neck and then I just freehanded uh, the jack face on here so that's all I did for his head I am gonna get my scissors and this is the neck part how it's straight I need to cut just a little bit of a half moon out for his neck so I'm gonna put it on him and do it while it's up there Alright, so now to finish him off, I'm going to go ahead and anywhere where I see the white shirt, I'm going to go ahead and glue the cape, his tails, to the front of the vest so it looks like it's one piece all the way down to probably about his waist. So then all that's left are his tails flapping. 
you won't be able to see any of this blue stuff even if the wind blows his tails I'll do it right here to the waist so I'm gonna go ahead and glue that off and then you guys will see the final result so there is Jack I think that's a six foot ladder that's next to him so you can gauge how big he is I believe he's probably about eight and a half or nine foot tall not sure now I did realize when I was looking at him there is one thing missing and that is his bat bow tie I retrieved this one this was his old one that I cut off his old outfit so this one would go right at his neck where that black piece of foam is from this one right here and it would extend out to his shoulders and it would pretty much cover that white piece of PVC right there it would cover that and some of the neck of the shirt so I am missing that but I don't even know if I have any of this stuff in the house right now to make it so he might have to go without it I'll try to find some in the house see if I could do it thank you so much for joining me I do want to mention initially when we made this jack I found the directions on how to make it by a YouTube channel and her name is 224 Boothy so 224 B O O T H Y I had to write that down because I would forget and that was a few years ago that's she is actually gives you the dimensions and how she made it and that's how what we followed to make this one the only difference was she paper mache the head and I'm too quite frankly too lazy to paper mache the face and the head so I went ahead and thought of using a pumpkin to go ahead and do it so she had the original video and that's how we got the idea and the measurements to do this so you might want to go check her out too she made the zero's doghouse she also made a really cool zero which was way too much work for me to do but i will show you the doghouse i made real quick i made an easier version my four zero doghouse is seen better days but all this is is an old doghouse that we had you could probably find one at a garage sale or a flea market or something and i just took this foam and glued it on there with uh i think i used just regular caulking or something and then i just made the little face and i carved out his name and painted it black and tried to put some kind of fancy scroll work and at, at one point i did have a little paint stick sticking out of here with a cross just like zero's doghouse has and then i made it I painted it gray and I tried to gray wash it so it looked like an old cemetery but that was my version of it but she also makes a doghouse if you guys are interested in seeing how she made hers all right so once again thank you for joining me on this Sunday October 27th 2019 I really appreciate you guys sticking with me I'm going to edit a lot, but I know this is a long video. I appreciate it, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm sure it'll be at the fort. Bye.